Hey Timmy, what's up? And you need me up there now? All right. I'll see you soon. All right, mate. Thank you. Bye. Chris is responding to an SOS from Tim Faulkner, the general manager of the Australian Reptile Park. Tim's pretty good with his animals, so for him to have to call me in, you know, this has got to be serious. Hey, Timmy. Hi, mate. How are you, buddy? I'm good. Thanks for coming. Thanks. It's all right. Now, yeah, where's our patient? I've called Chris to the reptile park today because one of our star koalas, Jack, he's two years old, has bumps all over his nose. We've never seen anything like it before, and it's important that Chris has a look and tells us what it is. That's the way. There we go. Jeez, it's quite dramatic. Have you ever seen it before? Not like this. No, I mean, I've seen a similar sort of thing on other animals. But never on a koala. And never that dramatic. Now I can finally have a look at Jack. The reality of his problem is quite breathtaking. Lips, eye, nose. It's like he's got these volcanoes that have just erupted. Yep. The thing for us is, is it life-threatening and is it contagious? And that's what we need to know. How many koalas have you got here? 20? Yeah. Yep, and he's the only one with it now and that's how we need to keep it. If Jack's condition is contagious, it could be devastating to a koala population. He's been housed with other koalas and it could already have spread. It's not like they're scabs. I mean, they, they don't just come off if you, if you grab hold of them. They're, they're actually firmly attached and they almost look like they're coming from, from deeper within. Yeah. There's a couple of interesting things about this. I mean, the timing for yep. me, the fact that he's just coming into sexual maturity. Yeah. Maybe it could be related to that, that change in hormones that he's currently sure. experiencing. The fact is, right now, everything's on the table in terms of what could be causing these lumps. They could be bacterial infections, and over time, they become fibrosed. Worst case scenario, it could be tumours. They've taken hold of all these parts of his body and are now starting to show their signs. The only way we're going to know is by taking a biopsy. Yep. We need to actually take a sample of those cells, yep. look at them under, under the microscope, yep. and work out exactly what's happening. Okay. Koalas are already a threatened species. Their numbers are in massive decline simply because of bushfires, habitat destruction, and even chlamydia. Now, to potentially have another issue they're facing with what Jack has, it's not a good thing. Let's go. There we go. All right. Sausage. Bedraggled little pup Apple has been brought into the Bondi Referral Hospital sash by Denise from the animal rescue group Paws. Good girl, Apple. She's been in the pound for two weeks and nobody came forward for her, so we rescued her. She's not doing too well. She's got a very nasty head shake. Oh, sausage. A bit stinky. When Denise picked up the little stray, she was shocked by her dreadful condition. Her ear is all matted together. I can feel under her tummy, she has burrs in her tummy. She's very smelly, but she's a very sweet little dog. Her little tail wags all the time. She's happy. Hello again. Hi, Lisa. How's it going? It's Good. been a How while. Are you? Good. You want me another little friend? Yes. Hello. Isn't she sweet? <laughs> Denise is hoping emergency vet Dr. Lisa Chimes can get to the bottom of the little Maltese Shih Tzu's disturbing head shaking. All right, we'll bring her through. Let's take okay. a look at her. 
What Denise does is truly incredible. She takes dogs like Apple from death row at the pound. I just hope that from my physical exam and some questions with Denise, we can find out what's going on. Okay, she's microchipped, mm -hmm. but whoever owned her hasn't claimed her, so probably didn't want her because yeah. she does have something going on. Okay, I can see there that head's having a little bit of a bob. Bit of a shake, hey, Apple, Apple. Apple, come over here, darling. Let's have a look at you. Oh, it's really bobbing around there, isn't it? Apart from Apple's obvious dishevelled condition, when I look at her, I can see that she's got a condition that's causing her to shake and bob her head all the time. Someone's been neglecting you. It's interesting because it looks like she's had a haircut, but parts of her are so matted and unkept. So someone has done something for her, but... It's weird. It's weird. It's yeah. very weird. Such a sweet little dog. I, yeah. I can't really understand why anyone would give her up. It happens, Lisa, mm. all the time. She's very upset. Yeah. I can't understand how anyone would give up such a gorgeous, friendly, sweet little dog. She's absolutely delightful. And to think of her in the pound all by herself just breaks my heart. I will get you through this. Yeah, Migs. Hey, good girl. Yeah. Hey. All right. All right, sweet hey. pea. We'll get you sorted. Also at mm. Sash, specialist surgeon Dr. Andrew Marchevsky is feeling the pressure. Hey, good girl. Yes, little Megalina. His good. mum Pat has brought in Meg, the beloved pet pooch of his 100-year-old grandmother. Mum was up with my grandmother the other day and uh, they actually noticed that Meggie had a little lump around her bottom. Mum took one look at it and gave me a ring and said, Andrew, I think this is for you to do. All right, Meggie, let's have a look at your bottom. That's, um, that's really nasty. Oh, dear. I think the lump she's got around her bum is a cancer of some sort. And it's really red and, and horrible around there and I think it would be causing a fair bit of irritation. So we've got to get it out of there. Well, I don't think it's going to be too much of a thing to take off, but I guess just with her age, yeah. anaesthetic, yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll have to be a little bit careful with what we're worried about. Mm. The surgery to remove the mass is routine, but what's really worrying Andrew is that Meg is 17 years old. My major concern with her is her anaesthesia. Um, you know, she seems healthy, but just older animals tend to have more problems. Their lungs aren't quite as good. They might have underlying heart disease we don't know about. So it's always a little bit risky. Every precaution will be taken to ensure that little Meg is safe. We'll give an anaesthetic, she'll yeah. wake up from very quickly. And um, I'll try and do some sutures that we don't have to take out so she doesn't have to stress her having to come back. So, OK. Yeah, all yeah. right, I'll get you back to Gran. Mother will be like a cat on a hot tin roof. Yeah. She'll yeah. be missing you already, no doubt. Absolutely. There's always a little bit of extra pressure when it's your Gran. This dog is her world, so yeah, there'll be no slip-ups. Let's go get that biopsy. Right, one, two, three. Chris and Tim have arrived at the Green Cross Veterinary Clinic, five minutes from the Australian Reptile Park. Hello, how are you? How are you? Good. Jack's here for a bit of a nose job. The two-year-old koala is suffering an horrific skin disorder, which is rapidly spreading over his nose and mouth. It doesn't look any more attractive, does it? No. All right, so we're going to get some gas into him here. Vet nurse Norell is helping to anaesthetise the little native, so a tissue sample can be taken from his nose. Yeah. You go back to him, right? Obviously, taking a biopsy in such a, a sensitive part of his body, he does need to be asleep for this, so that's why we're using the gas and the mask, and hopefully he'll be relaxed in, in just a moment. Good man. It's OK. Yeah, that's fine. Being knocked out under anaesthetic, it's always a worry, because that line rings true that Native animals don't handle it as well as domestic, so I'm always right on edge, but have faith in the vet. OK, so we'll just be quick here. So the moment that mask comes away, we'll get this biopsy in there, spin it a few times, and then take this lump out. OK, okay that's a nice fit of that one. OK, 
key with this biopsy is to take it nice and deep, get a full sample, and that way you know the pathologist has the best chance of giving us that answer we need. So, um, hopefully the answer will be in there. It's nice in there. I reckon we're done, Narelle. All right, okay. wake up, hey? Any anaesthetic has its risks, and it's just why in this situation you can never relax, and, and so, we're not going to take our eyes off him until he's well and truly awake. You use all sorts of little indicators to tell you when an animal is waking up. With a dog, they tend to chew. With a koala, their natural response is to grab hold of something. We'll know he's awake the moment he grabs hold of this finger here. The imaginary branch. Breathing's getting faster. Mm -hmm. Hello, mate. You right, buddy? Hmm? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> He's got Jack. He's on now. The moment Jack does that to my hand, you know, he's back. Hello, mate. You're all right. He wakes up and it's a relief. We've managed to get Jack through today, but unfortunately his battles are far from over. It is going to be a nervous wait until we get his results back. Obviously, fingers crossed that they're not tumours and they're something we can actually treat. Go on, Menzi. What a good dog. Right. At Sash, Andrew is preparing to operate on his grandmother's dog, Meg. The 17-year-old has a nasty cancer growing on its bottom. The surgery's gone fine and you know, it's come together nicely. We've solved her immediate problem when, when you're 17. That's what it's all about. Now we've got to wait for Meg to come through the anaesthesia and recover. Once she's through it, you know, I'll breathe a sigh of relief anyway. You can have a nice little sleep now. Mm -hmm. So, Denise, I would like to run some tests on her because we obviously don't know where she's come from, so it would be great to run a full panel of blood tests and make sure she hasn't got any internal problems. Meanwhile, Lisa is still trying to work out the cause of little rescue dog Apple's uncontrollable head shaking. I don't have a history on Apple and my physical exam can only go so far, so doing a blood test is the next reasonable thing to try and work out if she's got anything going on inside. Hey, Krista. This is little Apple and Denise. Hi, Krista. So we're just going to get some blood off her. The bottom line for Apple is she must get better, completely better, so that we can put her up for adoption and find her a home. All right, little one. Lisa wants to make sure Apple's kidneys, liver and other organs are all working normally before she starts treating the head shaking. Good girl, you're so brave, huh? Girl. All right, so we'll just run some tests on these. If everything's normal, then we can start treatment for this shaking problem she's okay. got. I just hope that we don't find anything really serious on these. You know, she could have anything. Yeah, we'll just say our usual prayers, Lisa. OK, I'll be back in a second. Okay. Apart from Apple's coat malnourishment and shaking, she actually seems like she's in pretty good condition. I can't understand why anyone would have dumped her and hopefully these blood tests will come back all clear. Isn't she cute? Gorgeous, isn't she? She is. She will be available for adoption, you oh, know. Great. She'd like to go with a vet nurse. Would she? Yeah, she would. OK. Yeah. All right, ladies okay. and Miss Apple, everything's good. All clear. All right, Yay. so she's got no sign of any internal diseases. Her blood tests are completely normal, so I'm really, really happy with that. Yeah. So now we can focus on this shaking problem she has. One of the obvious things Apple has is what we call an intention tremor. So it basically means when she has the intent to do something, when she performs an action, that's when her tremor is worse. And for me, that is a classic sign of a syndrome called shaker disease. So we don't actually know why it happens, but for some reason these young dogs get inflammation in that part of the brain that controls their coordination, and as a result, they have these tremors and the shakes. 
Fortunately, the treatment for shaker disease is pretty simple. It involves treating her with cortisone to try and control that inflammation in the cerebellum, the part of the brain that controls her coordination. Lisa also wants little Apple to get an immediate dose of TLC. I think this little princess needs a clip and bath and she'll be feeling a lot better. Good girl. Yay. Lucky girl. She's a lucky girl. Yeah. Chris has travelled from the Australian Reptile Park to the Northern Territory after an unusual SOS. About nine months ago, some absolute idiot decided to shoot a seagull with a crossbow. And now she has an arrow protruding about a foot out of a leg. And every day is a battle. Tell me you have seen her recently. Good morning, Dr Chris. How are you, Brian? Good, thank you. Good to see you. Local fisherman Brian has been closely monitoring the injured bird and recording its progress. It's I'm racking my brain trying to think of the best way to catch her. And yeah. I mean, I've got my ideas. I'm sure you've got your yeah, ideas. Yeah, we have. We certainly have a few ideas that are worth employing. All right, I've got some gear in the car. Yep. So I'll grab that and we'll, we'll load up, huh? Yep. Yep. All right. I'm going to get cracking. I'm being very genuine when I say I don't truly know how today is going to plan out. I don't really know exactly what we're hoping to achieve today. The main priority is to assess how she's going, but to truly know what sort of state she's in, we've got to get out there and we've got to see her. And that in itself is a challenge. Right yep. It's time to hit the water. OK, Brian. And they're joined by first mate Danny. You're not worried about crocs? No. The croc trap right there. I know. <laughs> You're all mad up here, you know that. Thank you. Thank <laughs> you, <laughs> Probably madder. <laughs> now that I'm here, you realise that this is a pretty raw environment. There's a lot of things here that want to eat you <laughs> and want to eat seagulls as well. I mean, the crocodiles are brutal, but the first thing I need to do is simply watch, have a look at her and see what sort of state this seagull's in and from there really fine-tune the plant and see exactly what we can do for it today. See how we go. Apple. Let's see how she goes with a bit of a groom. OK. At Sash, little Apple is about to get a makeover. Apple's fur is in a really sorry state. It's matted, it's filled with burrs, urine, faeces. She must be really uncomfortable and I can't wait to get this coat off her. Right, let's do this. What's this noise, honey? All right, that's OK. The bedraggled little pound pup has been diagnosed with Shaker syndrome. Good girl, honey. We just get all this knotted hair off you. After her clean-up, Lisa will start the pup on cortisone treatment. Her coat back here is just covered in urine, burrs, poo. Oh, we're getting through it really quickly, darling. That's the way. No, oh, my oh, God. Oh. That is unbelievable. It's like an ear. As I move over Apple's ears, these huge mats come off that are practically the size of her ears. I just can't understand how anyone could let their dog get to this state. She's being released. Wow. <laughs> that is just... Oh, Nearly done. I feel better, Gil. That's it. Apple's feeling pretty good about herself, but I don't think she knows what's coming next. She is about to have a bath in a sink. Oh, my God, honey. Have you ever had a bath before, Bubs? Probably not. <laughs> Her little head's really bobbing, Lisa, I'm sure. There's a lot of screaming and wriggling as we're trying to bath Apple. I don't think this little dog has ever had a bath before. You're all done. Come back to Denise. There you go. There you go. Oh, that feels so much better. So because all her blood tests are clear and otherwise she's pretty healthy, we're going to put her on some cortisone. Mm -hmm. And hopefully as that kicks in, the tremors will start to stop. And eventually she'll go into complete remission. Once Apple's head tremor is cured, hopefully she can be adopted out. 
I think Apple's a real fighter. She's got a real zest for life. She's put up with a lot today, coming out of the pound, having everybody examine her. You know, she deserves to find the best home. Yeah, I don't want you. There are a lot of crocs in this river, aren't there? There are a lot of crocs in the river here, yep. But Danny is our spotter at the front. Yeah, Danny is my first mate. Chris is in remote waterways about an hour north of Darwin. He's hoping to get a look at a sea eagle that has an arrow through her leg. You've got to question why someone would actually take that time to shoot a sea eagle. But who knows? I mean, they may just be a total idiot but they could have been looking for a trophy to actually taxidermy, or could have simply been sport. Can, can she still fish? I mean, do you see her getting fish herself? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. And she can do that easily, or is it difficult with oh, the, the arrow? It's there? a bit of a challenge. She can pick it up OK, but when she curls her legs back, the arrow hits the water, yeah. and then she lets the fish off. If the sea eagle is found, it's likely her mate will be alongside her. How long have they been around this area for now? Uh, they're territorial to this region and they have been out here about uh, 10 to 15 years. And always the same pair, so it's... it's same pair, yeah. Yep. So the monogamous pair that are essentially breeding for life. Yeah. It's probably a cliche, but she's, she's lucky to have him, isn't she? She's... It's funny you say that we're going to have it to name the bird Lucky. <laughs> We're in their kind of feeding zone right now, aren't we? Yep, we're yeah. in the zone now. Yeah. This is a massive area. I mean, it is the eagle in the haystack because oh, at the moment, well, we can't see any movement whatsoever. But the one thing we have to our advantage is the fact that sea eagles have amazing eyesight. So if we can generate a bit of interest here with some other birds circling around, they'll see that no matter where they are and they'll draw them in. We got one coming in circling. It's a single, so I assume it's probably not a sea eagle. Would you have a look about one o'clock above the tree line? Is that a Brahmini or a eagle? The flying pattern doesn't really match, so I, I do think it's a Brahmini kite. But it's a start. You know, if we get those, we might get a few sea eagles. Yeah, Brian. I already got one of them. Just over here. At about 11 o'clock. That is it. Hi, Lizzie. Hey, any Wagalai eggs yet? I haven't been up there today. <sighs> How long have we been waiting? Oh, well, you tell me. We've tried many times, but this could be it. Good luck. OK, I'm going up there. Fingers crossed. All right. At the Australian Reptile Park, Everyone is excited about a special breeding program. Is today the big day? Tim is checking on a female dwarf king brown snake. What are you hiding in there, little girl? Two months ago, Tim introduced a male dwarf king brown into the enclosure. Uh, in you go, mate. There she is. What do you reckon? Dwarf king browns, also known as Weigelei, are incredibly rare and captive breeding programs like this one could be the key to their survival. Tim faced an anxious wait to find out if the mating resulted in successfully fertilised eggs. Today could be a world first. If she's going to lay eggs and if she has eggs inside her, it's got to be close to the date. Amazing. This is awesome, we've got eggs, but we're only halfway. Hopefully the eggs are fertile and this could be the first clutch to ever hatch. Come on darling, that's it, that's it. Now I need to remove the eggs and set them up in an artificial incubator. Now in the wild, a snake might find a perfect spot that's climatically controlled to hatch those eggs. 
that can be difficult to provide sometimes within their enclosure. So we use a whole room that's the perfect temperature and perfect environment to hatch the little snakes. There it is, the egg of a dwarf king brown. Little egg for a little snake. White gold, if you ask me. Yeah, that's it. Yep. That's a. Uh... Chris is near Darwin trying to spot Lucky, the sea eagle with a massive arrow protruding from its body. Yeah, Brian, definitely her. Can see the arrow in there. There are a couple of really important steps before we actually get to the act of catching her. And first of all, I really want to get some photos of this eagle. I want to see exactly what sort of body condition she's in, how she's flying, how she's manipulating herself in flight, and also, importantly, catching food. OK, so it's definitely her. I mean, we've got a, a big arrow sticking out of that leg there. She's in decent condition. I wouldn't say she's underweight. And that arrow is really moving through the the right thigh. Whilst I'm encouraged by what I've seen from her so far, there's no doubt that catching her is still the best chance here of giving her a normal life. We're probably in with a chance here, Chris. She'll come in and grab, and when she grabs it there, you pull on this, and that releases the snare and tightens like a noose, hopefully around her ankles there. Yep. And then we can nurse her back yep. to land. One risk we have here is the crocodile because you know they could be sitting out there watching what's going on and if a bird like that you're gonna hit the deck we're not at liberty to just dive in and pick the bird up you know if we're lucky enough to catch her with this lure here then we'd have to net her out of the water we'd have to get the gloves on cut it and minimize the stress and get her back to the wild as quick as we can if she's watching and hopefully the eyes are bigger than the stomach she'll be tempted enough to take flight and then then we're in the game here. Right, going in three, two, one. Well, it floats. <laughs> here we go. What's coming up now is going to be a bit of a delicate dance because we need to throw out enough fish to get the Brahmini kites interested and, importantly, occupied. From there, we can then throw out our lure and hopefully catch her. But if she takes the fish we throw out now, that's a disaster, because then she's satisfied, she'll decide that, hey, I don't need to go for any more fish, and our chance of actually catching it with our lure rapidly diminish. That's good, Brumney kites have cleared out. It's got two eagles circling around. OK, ladies first. But not everything is going to plan. Yeah, is she circling there? She can see that fish. Oh, don't. Don't do it, don't, 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 don't. No, I didn't want that to happen. Oh. But I'll try again. Maybe it will give her half an hour. She'll be probably digest that and come back. You're kind of stuck, aren't you? Because you want the other ones to take the fish and distract yeah, all the yeah. other birds. But I mean, look, on the upside, she can actually fish. She can. Nearly had her. But in the wild, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Ooh, now we've got a battle going on. They're both trying to get the same bit of food here. Can she fend off the competition trying to steal it? She may be weakened now because of this arrow, so the juvenile may feel like she can come in and, and start Take stealing the food. Territory, yeah. Look at that, she's going to go and feed, but now the male's coming in to get rid of that juvenile that's hassling her. That's, that's incredible, the bond they must have, though, for him to be doing that. Yeah, yeah. It's a pretty amazing thing to see. That, that's almost a human emotion you see there, where the, the man's coming in to defend his woman. You don't normally expect that with wild animals, but you see it there, and it's, it's, it's quite touching, you know? And, and he clearly knows that his missus isn't doing so well and he's, he's willing to lend her a hand. A bit of romance going on there. I think she's a survivor. She's a strong girl. She's got a partner who's, I think, been with her right through. And, you know, when they pair up like that, they pair up for life. Seeing her condition, seeing how she flies and seeing how she manages to manipulate herself, I, I'm, to be honest, a little bit heartened. I, I'm encouraged because I, I feel like she's coping better than I thought she would. And catching her might actually be too traumatic and may actually put her through unnecessary stress when, at the moment, whether she has the arrow or not, isn't really affecting her life at all. We got the 
opportunity of seeing the bird today, which is uh, a big consolation, really, because you know it's again proven to me that she's still strong and healthy. But the day is not over yet. I think we've got a little surprise waiting for us here. Why? I think the door's down, Brian. We didn't Go catch a, a sea right, eagle, Brian. but it looks like we've caught a crocodile. Full alert. Uh-oh. Hey, Meg. How you doing? I think you're right to go home, aren't you? Why were we worried about your anaesthetic? Covered like a two-year-old. Not a 17-year-old. Later that afternoon at Sash, Meg, the little terrier which belongs to Andrew's grandmother, has recovered from her surgery. She's an amazing old dog, she really is. For the last hour and a half, she's been howling and oh, telling me she wants to leave, so we're going to get her out the door. Andrew's mum, Pat, is also thrilled with the pup's progress. She's done very well. Ooh, yeah. She's come out of the anaesthetic very well. Yeah, no, no worries at all. Truly has surprised me how quickly she's come out from the anaesthetic. She's ready to go home and I'm very happy. So take her home, say hello to Gran for me. Shall do. And uh, let me know how she's doing in a week or so. I shall. Yeah. Hey, we go home? All right. Thank you very much. All right, Mum. OK. Bye. See you, Non. Bye. Thank you. Gran will be ecstatic to have her back home. She's you know, been worried about her, as you'd imagine. And, you know, she's, her whole life revolves around patting a dog's, feeding a dog's, patting a dog's, feeding a dog's. So, yeah, it's important. Thank you. That's it. Right. Look out. Full alert. Chris is near Darwin where he's been on the water monitoring an injured sea eagle. It's a pretty interesting old day when you get back from having not caught a sea eagle, but somehow you've caught a croc. That's the territory for you. The croc trap is right next to a busy boat ramp, and rangers have arrived to remove the animal. There's a croc trap here because this is a boat ramp that gets used all day. And the thing about crocs is they notice habits forming, and once they see people going in and out of the water here, they'll hang around and hope for a meal, and that meal could be human. Just hang on here, we need a couple on the rope because we takes off. Yep. Chris goes swimming. What do you do with a croc you've just caught in a croc trap? Guess we're about to find out. OK, open it up. Yep. And let him go. Here we go, here he comes, here he comes, here he comes. Here we go back a bit. This croc is only about one and a half to two metres long, so it shouldn't be a massive problem. But the thing about these crocs is they're small, they're fast, they're agile, and they're tricky to handle. He's not going to probably kill you through his bite, but the thing is, he can still drown on a dock. You know? mm. If we keep you underwater, well, you can't hold your breath, so it mm. doesn't matter how big you are. We've had four fatalities so far this year, so uh, we haven't even got into our bad time of the season. Only last month we got a 4.12 out of here, so we do get a, um, a number of crocs here. The captured saltwater croc will be taken to a nearby crocodile farm. It's kind of a bizarre end to what has been a pretty tough day, but you miss one and all of a sudden you end up with another. It's just the way things work around here. Now, as much as this place is full of surprises, what won't surprise me is if Brian eventually catches Lucky. He's not going to give up. Oh, look at her come down. Oh, look at that. Hello, Jackie boy. What's going on? At the Australian Reptile Park, it's been a worrying time for Tim. Finally, Jack's biopsy results are in. Unbelievable. He has acne. He's two years old. He's turning from a juvenile koala into a man. They do it at this age. And he's a pimple-faced teenager. The good news is, it's not contagious. How's that nose of yours, buddy? How's that nose? Well, it's no worse. The spotty teenager will need daily treatment. Antiseptic wash first. Stay there. Uh -uh. Thank you. I need to scrub up his nose, his lips, his eyes, and just keep it nice and clean and exfoliate a bit of that old skin. And then once it's clean and dry, apply some moisturiser. Come here, pal. There we go. That's a boy. A little bit round your mouth. That's you all done. 
It's such a relief. Now Jack can be like a normal teenager. And he's showing signs that he's ready to breed, and that's a good thing. He needs those bumps cleared up to look good for the ladies. There you go, mate. See you tomorrow, Jack. Come on. Good girl. It's been three months since Little Apple began treatment for her debilitating shaker syndrome. And finally, there's some good news. Apple is doing brilliantly. The head wobble has stopped, uh, the medication has worked, and everything's great. So now Apple's ready for a new home. Come on, Apple. Look who's over here. You excited? Here she is. Hello. 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 Look. Oh. Hello. So, Sushma, what do you think? Oh, she looks really beautiful. We could not letting her go anywhere. We love giving dogs another chance at life, so we are going to adopt her and she stays with us forever. Oh, you are a lovely girl. Sushma and her family are just wonderful because to them, a dog is a family member. They include their dogs in everything. Any dog that goes to live with Sushma's family is a very lucky dog. Good girl. Apple's recovered, she's happy. We could not have asked for a better ending for Apple. It's great. Bye, Apple. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Let's go home. Come on, Apple. Good girl. Hey, Kel. Hey. What are you chopping up? Just some possum food. Bet I can guess where you're going. Yeah, you got it. I'm heading to the Wagga Lice. Have they hatched yet? No. Any day. Good luck. Thank you. Fingers crossed. Yeah. It's another exciting day for Tim at the Australian Reptile Park. Look at you. Amazing. This is exactly what he's been hoping for. Baby Dwarf King Browns. One, two, three, four, five, six. Beautiful. The successful breeding of the dwarf king brown species, also known as Weigel Eye, is a world first. I gotta call John. Tim to John. Yeah, Tim. Hey John, you gotta make your way up to the vendor room. You're in for a little treat. Yeah, okay, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, all right. John Weigel, the reptile park owner, found and discovered this dwarf king brown species in the Kimberley region of Western Australia. That's why their last name is Weigel Eye, named after him. That's why it makes this not only a world first and a good achievement, but we're really proud because we've done this for John. Hey, it is what I was hoping. It certainly is. Is this, this the Weigel Eyes? Yep, all six hatched. Well, <laughs> isn't that great? That's it the is. first time in Australia. That's fantastic. Watch out, mate. They're little, but still pack a punch. Oh, I, don't need, I don't need to tell you that, do I? This is very exciting. And when you work at a reptile park, this is the sort of thing that makes it worthwhile. Um, because I know the guys have been working a long time trying to get some successful breeding from these snakes. And, and yeah, they put it together. It's fantastic. These hatchlings are now important pioneers. If the breeding program continues to be successful, it could be the key to the survival of this rare and endangered species. I better set them up in their little enclosures. Well, good on you. I'm gonna, I gotta go back to my mundane world, but uh, well done. <laughs> well, you found the species. Well, that was the easy part. Yeah, this, yeah I don't this, know. This is, this is the juicy part. Well done. That's very exciting. Breeding the Dwarf King Browns is a real highlight, but being able to show them to John on top of that, what well, just makes it better. He's really humble, but the fact is, he discovered this species, and it's a credit to the whole team here that we can proudly show them to him. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny Dusek from Bondi Vet. If you love our show and want to see more, plus some amazing content about pets and how to care for them, hit the subscribe button. Click that little notification bell and we'll see you on our next video.